Hey everybody, um, I'm going to, before posting today's chapter, do a quick recap video. A lot of people have said it's been hard to kind of keep track of everything that's going on, and I agree. Um, these stories were always so complicated and complex. So I'm gonna give you a quick, quick, quick rundown of who our characters are and kind of a few things that have happened so far. First, we have Walter Sidney. Walter Sidney is our dude we met in the first couple chapters who went into what we have come to affectionately call the murder house. He's the one that overheard the um, robbery plans and overheard the robbers and murderers talking about all their robbing and murdering. Um, he uh, got tossed down a trap door, which we refer to as the murder hole, um, and was fortunate enough instead of landing in the ditch underneath the house where the fast flowing water was that would have washed away, he landed on the banks and was able to climb out through some ingenuity, um, had a few more adventures in that area of London, but managed to get home. And when he got home, he wrote a warning letter to the Markhams because he had overheard they were the ones who were going to get robbed um, and to the Lord Mayor of London telling him what had happened. But as far as we know, nothing happened from that letter. Um, and the Markhams never did get robbed. No one even tried. Um, we also know that in Walter Sidney's house, there are two portraits that um, we've been told are clearly of a brother and sister. Um, I have my suspicions that uh, it might be Walter Sidney and Walter Sidney's sibling. Um, we also have discovered that Walter Sidney is actually a woman dressed as a man, but we don't know entirely why, and neither does she. She's been told by Mr. Stevens, who is her like her trustee, her guardian, um, that it's really important that she does that, but um, she doesn't really know why. And uh, Mr. Stevens has just brought into their secret a man named Mr. George Montague, who we are not entirely sure that we trust. Meanwhile, over at the Markham house, we have met Richard Markham. Richard Markham is the younger of two brothers. His older brother's name is Eugene. And we learn from the first time we meet them that Richard is, he's smart and he's kind and he has a good heart, whereas his brother Eugene is selfish and greedy. Um, Eugene ran away from home, essentially, um, after a fight with his father. We jump ahead four years. Richard is now 19 years old. He is an orphan and has not seen his brother in a very, very, very long time. He is pulled into a friendship with Mr. Chicha. Chester, Sir Rupert, and Diana, who's known as Mrs. Arlington. We learn from Diana that she has a difficult past, a difficult history. As she related it, her family's fortunes were squandered and she was ruined by a man named Mr. George Montague. And we just found out yesterday that Mr. Whittingham, who is, <clears throat> excuse me, the butler at the Markham house has become very good friends with Mr. Chichester's valet. Now, how that came to be, we don't know. Um, in the chapter we spent with those two, we meet a bunch of interesting people at a local pub. And in the midst of that discussion, we hear them talk about a man named George. And I suspect that's going to be important. So there you go. Our two main line plot lines we have, Richard Markham and uh, Walter Sidney, and those two have actually met each other at Diana's home. So obviously those plot lines are going to overlap. So yes, it's getting crazy. It's very, very complex and chaotic, but that's the way these stories were. They were absolutely the um, soap operas of their time. So it's getting exciting. It's getting fun. Hopefully that helps you kind of refresh your memory of what's about to come, and I will be posting the next chapter very, very soon. Mm -hmm.